Well, good day, viewers. I'm Kamal Haynes of 284 Media. Well, today we have a special report from the Ministry of Education, Culture, Youth Affairs, Fisheries and Agriculture, who wants your input on the newly revised Virgin Islands Scholarship Program policy. While the scholarship um, program initiated more than four decades ago has been one of the main arteries through which the government of the Virgin Islands has and continues to support the education and training needs of the citizens of the territory. But the policy is being revised, recognizing the need to give direction to the program to ensure its sustainability for the education and training needs of the BVI population. Well, here today to speak on the scholarship program policy is none other than the Deputy Premier and Minister for Education, Dr. The Honorable Natalia Wheatley. But before we get to any questions, let's first take a quick commercial break. Live stream cable TV is here with CCT Live. Access over 80 channels that you can watch either at home or when you're on the go. And don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local programming. Rewind and watch in your own time. Come to CCT today and ask about our one month free trial offer. CCT Live, bring it home. Welcome back viewers. Well, as mentioned previously, we have with us the Deputy Premier and Minister for Education, Dr. The Honorable Natalia Wheatley. Welcome, Dr. Wheatley. Thank you, Kamal, for having me. And I'm glad to have the opportunity to speak about the scholarship policy. Right, um, viewers, he's here to speak about the new uh, Virgin Islands Scholarship Program policy. Now, let's get into the questions. I want to first start by asking, what are some of the new inclusions to the revised Virgin Islands Scholarship Program policy? Well, thank you for the question, Kamal. We're very proud of our scholarship program. As you said, that's been running for over four decades. In fact, my uh, grandfather was a big part of the scholarship program, Dr. Uh, Willard Wheatley, uh, when he was uh, chief minister between 1971 and 1979. And it's a legacy that I'm proud of. Uh, we've had a good scholarship policy over the years but we've made some tweaks to it. We've made some slight amendments just to help it to function um, better based on our experience, especially since the hurricanes of 2017 and now this pandemic. Uh, so how we deal with distance learning uh, is a bit different, different in this policy. We've better defined distance learning. Uh, in the previous policy, distance learning was not as common or as regular as it is now. We've also increased the funding uh, for the national scholarships from 18,000 to 20,000, while we uh, continue to provide scholarships for our law students and our medical students at a rate of $27,000. We've made some slight changes to eligibility. For instance, we are um, writing a policy in such a way where the majority of our students would have began uh, tertiary education uh, by the time um, they apply um, at our, uh, pre preferably at our local H. Laverty Stout uh, Community College. Um, but persons who have other types of qualifications that would allow them to enter university without a challenge uh, for those who have the IB, um, the International Baccalaureate. Uh, for those persons who have CAPE, and CAPE students have no problem um, matriculating directly into tertiary education. And as well, um, persons who have their CVQs, etc. cetera. Uh, so those persons would be eligible for scholarships and of course eligibility has a lot to do with your with your grades you have to make good grades among other things that that we can discuss in terms of changes to the scholarship policy mm -hmm. and you, you spoke about um, the criteria includes grades um, for qualification but it also includes that you must be a virgin islander could you um, explain that for, for some people because we do know that the policy here in terms of, you know, uh, 
status in terms of whether you're a belonger, etc., is a little tricky and is a little different than what people are accustomed to. So for those persons who may be wondering, um, for example, they would have had a, a, a conversation with someone on this same um, policy where they were stating that, you know, if you are born here but your parents are not from here, you may not qualify. Just explain it for those persons who may be in the gray area and not fully comprehend um, how you may qualify to become um, um, uh, a, a sure selection or, or, or one of the top tier selections once you are, are born here uh, and stuff. Just clarify uh, for the people. What you mentioned, Kamal, is, is actually a, a very um, this difficult uh, situation to deal with, particularly in the school system. Uh, you will have persons who may have been born here or may have come here at a very young age. Um, but they are not belongers or, or BVI landers. And these scholarships do have national qualifications. And uh, that's why the Virgin Islands Party government, uh, when we first got in, we wanted to regularize as many persons as possible. And because you had persons being here for quite some time and they were not able to, to gain their status. The reason why it's tied to status is because, of course, you want to ensure persons who, as much as possible, receive these awards will return to the Virgin Islands and make a contribution. And I'm fully aware of the fact that you have quite a number of persons who have no intention of leaving. They, um, the BVI is home, but yet uh, they do not have their, their national status. And quite a number of those persons I have assisted financially um, through grants uh, to be able to attend the university, especially those who've performed uh, excellently academically because certainly they deserve to be, uh, to be, um, to be looked after and to be um, rewarded for their academic excellence. Uh, so it's a, it's a difficult situation, but yes, these scholarships are tied to nationality. Mm -hmm. Indeed, and it's ultimately, um, you, you said this is a revised policy um, is being proposed before being finalized because obviously the whole goal is to get the input from the public. But for those persons, for example, who may have been here all their life, um, would have gone through primary, um, high school and um, HLSCC and, and basically they're now uh, adults and they want to basically um, go through the government to get the same um, scholarship. As you said before, it doesn't, uh, under the, the, the um, previous uh, policy, um, and under this present policy, they will not be qualified because they, don't, they do not have the national status. Um, are there any uh, considerations to put some clause in there to, that would help uh, facilitate these persons? Uh, well, I think that's a consideration. As, as you said before, we're doing consultations right now. Uh, right now, it's not in the bill, but persons certainly can make their voice known. Uh, but there are are other avenues as well uh, and one of those avenues has to do with uh, one of those avenues has to do with requesting a grant uh, from the Minister of Education which is myself okay uh, and so those are avenues those persons can have to get their school in abroad uh, certainly if you say they, they've done their whole school in here and they've done well academically they'd be excellent candidates for for grants through them through the ministry Okay, and moving on, under this new policy, it says that applicants granted or applying for a Virgin Islands scholarship who have been deemed to belong to the Virgin Islands shall fall into four categories. We also would have seen um, one of these categories, um, including special needs. I want you to touch on this because I, I'm aware that a lot of persons aren't aware that there are scholarships available for special needs students and special needs um, persons. Um, can you just speak about this in um, incorporating and ensuring that the special needs persons are also uh, basically catered to? Yes, well, the ministry has had a program where students were going specifically to a school called Vanguard. Uh, when they were able to, and we've had some students who have done quite well. Uh, when I came in as minister, uh, some of those uh, students, I think they were on around four-year um, four scholarships, and some of them weren't able to finish in the time that that four years expired. So I chose to continue uh, for those students to, to be able to get their diplomas from the Vanguard School. So we wanted to ensure that we continue to be able to support our 
um, differently abled students because of course they are a part of our society uh, they are very talented individuals and they have a lot to contribute to our society so we certainly didn't want to leave them out as it pertained to this policy but we also as well have to strengthen our provision of educational services to students who are differently abled right here in the BVI because we recognize and appreciate that we can't send all our differently abled students away. So we must strengthen the provision right here and we are doing so. We, we had a special, edu, a special education council that we formed that was headed by, uh, first it was headed by or Orlando Crab, along with Danica Stout, and now it's headed by um, Janelle um, Reimer, uh, as, long, as well as Danica Stout, along with a host of other excellent persons who are doing a wonderful job, and we're making ma many changes in the area of special education uh, to accommodate the students who are here locally. But we still wanted to have the option um, of being able to provide scholarships for um, this differently abled students to go abroad. Great. Um, now let's speak about the scholarship committee. Will there be a new committee formed under this policy? And can you speak to the current composition of the scholarship committee? Well, the scholarship committee uh, was appointed by cabinet. And I believe um, most of them had a three-year term, which has not yet expired. Um, but I've been pleased with the work of the scholarship committee. Um, it's headed by Sam Julio Henry, uh, who's been doing a, a good job as a chairperson. And we have other persons who are on the committee. Uh, we have someone representing law, which is Mrs. Patricia Archibald Bowers. We also have someone representing education. Uh, Ms. Sh uh, Sh Sharia De Castro. Uh, we have someone representing the technical fields, with which is Mr. Uh, Courtney De Castro. We also have someone representing agriculture and fisheries, Mr. Coy Smith. Uh, we have Shana Smith, who's an engineer, but she's also a member of the BVI CCHA, because of course, we want to be able to recommend some changes so that we can have a smooth transition from education to employment. And in the same vein, we had uh, Ms. Rakima Turnbull, who, is, uh, who owns, of course, higher BVI. We have a representative of HR on the committee, who is uh, Ms. Kaisa Penn, because, of course, some of these students will transition into the government employment, and we wanted a representative from HR. We also included a representative of the Labor Department. Traditionally, we've only given the information of returning students to government HR, but we wanted to change that because we expect that these students can be employed in the private sector as well. So we put a representative from the Labor Department, Mrs. Kishan, Cupid Brathwit. We have someone representing medicine, who is Dr. June Samuel. Um, Sam Henry, as I said, he represents tourism, um, being in the tourism industry for such a long time. And I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm missing some other persons on the committee. Uh, they will certainly forgive me for that. Um, but I think I did a good job of remembering most of them. And the committee, we've, we, we've, see, we've sought to broaden their scope. We want them to be able not just to interview students, but we want them to participate in promoting the scholarship program and helping to educate persons about the scholarship program uh, so that even before applying for a scholarship, they understand what's required in, to be successful in the application process. Uh, perhaps maybe they have more pointers about how um, they can um, be better prepared for the interview. Um, they might have some pointers about how they can choose an area of study, uh, things about what type of school uh, they can choose. 
Uh, so we want the scholarship committee to also help with those things along with the scholarship manager. Great, great indeed. Now let's um, turn back to the um, topic of funding. Um, well, according to the, the revised policy, um, the main purpose of the scholarship award is to assist recipients in meeting the cost of courses of study and not only to um, meet the entire cost because um, I know a lot of people may get the perception that you know I have a scholarship is supposed to cover the entire cost of the scholarship of the um, program I'm doing but according to this um, information it says that it's supposed to cover the majority of the cost and not entirely the entire um, cost of a particular program. I want you to elaborate on this particular topic because um, a lot of persons um, you know so that a lot of persons want to, want to be surprised uh, when they go to uh, apply for a scholarship through government? Okay, it's an important query um, because, of course, um, university can get very expensive. And so this is an important consideration of this uh, committee. We do have the H. Laverty Stout Community College that provides um, free tertiary education for persons uh, who are belongers. And even persons who are non-belongers, we have a very, I would say, affordable, very affordable rates. Um, and the college is also making partnerships with many universities abroad. And I believe persons should consider these scholarships because the cost of tuition will be greatly reduced at some very quality institutions, institutions in the United States, institutions in the United Kingdom, as well as here in the region. And of course, um, $20,000, which is an increase, has been able to, the, the $18,000 that we had before has been able to facilitate uh, quite a number of our scholarship students. But it becomes even more affordable when you go to A. Slavity Stout Community College. But yes, this, uh, this scholarship award is to supplement it won't be able to do everything. If we wanted to, to give scholarships to handle everything, um, especially at some very expensive universities, that means uh, a lot less persons would receive scholarships. Because of course I believe the, the BVI per capita is quite generous in terms of awarding scholarships. And in some other countries, you don't have as many scholarships per capita and of course, it, it, which leads to a very, very, very competitive process for scholarships. But I believe the government here over the years has been very generous and we want to get as many persons who are eligible and qualified awards. That's why last year we awarded over 30 persons with national scholarships and provided grants for many, many, many more, many dozens more persons. Uh, perhaps uh, I'll have to get the statistics, but probably well over 50 persons uh, received grants uh, last year. And it was the same the year before and the year before. We have been giving out quite a number of scholarships since we restarted the Scholarship Abroad program, which was stopped after the, the hurricanes of 2017. And we were actually pretty much behind in the provision of scholarships because of the, the, two, the two or three years in which the program was stopped. So there are so many deserving applicants who have been applying and we want to ensure that we get as many of them as possible. So yes, um, selecting a university that is affordable as well as a quality uh, university is important. But persons who want to send their child or, 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 or I should say applicants who want to go to a school which is very expensive, they must understand that they will have to foot part of the bill. Great indeed, because that was a very important question. Well, also, now, let's speak about the different types and values of scholarship. I know you would have just mentioned that there uh, is an increase to $20,000 for the scholarships. Um, just speak about um, some of the different types of scholarships and some of the sectors that you, um, the government is looking to fill. Because obviously, with a scholarship, it's all about filling those gaps within the um, territory that may exist presently. Um, just, so just, just speak about those um, different uh, types and uh, scholarships and values that will be offered through the revised uh, policy. 
Well, I did mention that law and medical students uh, are awarded at 27,000. I must say, Kamal, of course, you've had representations from persons who's, who have said that these are not the only areas um, that should have increased awards because you have different areas, for instance, persons who want to become pilots. And it's incredibly expensive. And I can say that from my experience being minister and persons writing to me for, for grants for students who are doing um, aeronautics or, or what other area um, persons do when they want to become pilots. Some persons have come to me that they, you know, their child is, is engineer and the engineering schools are very expensive if you want to go to a school which is, which is a reputable school for engineering. So I hear those concerns and I would ask those persons to make their representations uh, to the ministry. Uh, we, we will have a, a, a virtual public meeting uh, perhaps next week. The dates will be announced very soon so persons can make their views known as it pertains to this. Um, and then we have the National Scholarship Awards, of course, of 20,000. There were 18,000 per annum uh, before. Great. Now let's talk about the importance of getting the input of the public on the revised policy, because um, obviously that is the entire goal, because as uh, according to the information they received, they, have, they will have up until Friday the 11th of February to submit their comments. So let's speak about the importance of getting persons give their input on the revised policy before it becomes finalized. Uh, it's very important. Um, some persons, of course, uh, who are scholarship students may, have, may not have been pleased with all of the provisions in the scholarship policy. And I'm, I, I'm doubtful that many persons who applied for scholarships read the scholarship policy. But only when they become students, they become aware of these provisions and how it potentially impacts them. And now these students, along with their parents, along with the rest of the community, have the opportunity to really contribute to the discussion about what will be the conditions in this scholarship policy. Because I can say to you, uh, we've had a, a number of situations um, over the years, especially since the hurricanes, uh, which has caused, caused a great deal of contention. For instance, the, the students have to maintain a particular grade point average. And if they don't maintain that grade point average, they risk losing the scholarship. You also have persons who are not able to finish um, in the allotted time. So what happens if you're not finishing the allotted time? Some persons want extensions of scholarships. So this scholarship policy deals with all of that. It might deal with you getting into an accident. You get into an accident or you, um, for the young ladies perhaps, we've had students in the past who've gotten pregnant uh, while being a scholarship student. How do we handle those things? For those students who are um, in areas such as psychology, something very interesting about the policy that we did, we've made provisions for students who are in areas like psychology to continue on to a master's degree. But this scholarship policy is mainly for persons to do bachelor's degrees, unless you're in certain specific areas. Okay, and that's something that you can contribute to. Because of course, if we provide uh, scholarships for, uh, for uh, master's degrees, that may disadvantage some persons who wanna do their bachelor's degrees. We, we may have to give less to persons who've who are doing bachelor's degrees. So those are things that we want the public's feedback on. I think persons will find it to be a very interesting read and they'll see uh, really what we're trying to do with the scholarship policy. And if I can say, Kamal, uh, I know that we're probably winding down the, the interview. Uh, what we're really trying to achieve is to ensure that we're able to fill um, the, the labor needs that we have here in the territory. As you well know, um, we have to import a lot of labor here to the Virgin Islands. Um, but we also have a lot of persons who go to school and come back and cannot find employment because perhaps maybe they chose an area 
where there's not a lot of labor demand. And, and there could be other reasons as well that I won't get into on this forum. But we want to ensure that we provide scholarships in areas where there is a, a, a national need so that we don't have students come back and they're not able to get jobs. And that's something that we have to consider very carefully. We also want to reward students who've done well academically. Uh, that's very important. Um, and also we want to ensure that we help to transform persons individually into the best persons that they can be. And so those are some of our goals. And we want persons to participate in this process to make sure we've gotten it right. Great. And what are some of the channels that these persons can use to get their, um, to basically give their input on the policy? Um, well, persons can write to the ministry. Of course, it's been advertised on the, the government website. Uh, so you'll be able to find the policy on the government web website, which is www.bvi.gov.vg. Uh, uh, you'll be able to find it there. And of course, um, they have a contact email that you have there. Uh, you also can write directly to the Ministry of Education. Um, and you'll be able to find the Ministry of Education's email on the same government website. And of course, we're going to have a public meeting that we're going to announce very soon. So persons can tune in. Uh, they can listen to the scholarship manager do a presentation. And then we'll have um, time for question and answer right after. Great. And finally, are there any final comments on the subject matter? Uh, just to say we are excited about um, having a new crop of scholarship students. We had a very competitive process uh, last time around. And certainly we know that we're going to have um, a, a great deal of excellent students. We had some great uh, persons who are graduating from the college in, in May. And of course, we look forward to that new crop of, of, of students. We will soon be opening. As soon as we complete this process as it pertains to the scholarship policy, we're going to be opening for applications. And persons will be able to apply, and uh, we'll get the ball rolling. Great. I want to thank you, Minister, for joining me and taking the time out to basically appeal to the residents and basically try to get more persons to give their input on this well-needed, um, um, important policy, um, which I'm sure will benefit the territory for decades to come. Thank you so much. Well, there you heard it, viewers. Interested persons can view the policy on the government's website and or they can use um, the, uh, a link that they will provide uh, bit.ly forward slash VI scholarship policy. They can click, um, select that link, put it in your browser and you would see, uh, basically you will see the uh, scholarship, um, the scholarship document is about 40, 30 to 40 pages and you can access the document, peruse the document basically before providing questions because a lot of your questions may come from viewing the document. And you have until Friday, February 11th to send your comments to the email address mec at gov.vg. Well, that's it for today's special report. Be sure to log on to our 284media.com website for this and more special interviews. And like us on Facebook at 284media and 284BVI on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Kamal Haynes. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.